Getting to space is easy, right? but getting to orbit is a hundred times harder than getting to space. That's why Elon Musk has continuously changed the materials, techniques, and design for every part of Starship, heading to a successful orbital launch. And most recently, after announcing that SpaceX is preparing for a November orbital test flight, CEO Elon Musk has also revealed that Booster 9 has many design changes. But what exactly are these changes? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In a series of tweets on September 21st, Musk expressed that he is also excited about Super Heavy Booster 9, which has many design changes, especially for full-engine RUD isolation. If you didn't know, RUD is short for Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly, otherwise known as an explosion, and a thrust section. So, to put it simply, the company is designing B9 to be able to fully isolate all 33 Raptors from each other, crucial for preventing the failure of one engine from damaging others. And to be honest, the concern is understandable, but either way, there is plenty of evidence that those Raptors are far from perfectly reliable. And we can see it here, clearly, through Booster 7's test campaign. Quite a few Raptor engines were damaged during the tests, especially during the roaring July 11th explosion at Starbase. In the days that followed, dozens of engines were removed from the B-7 and then replaced with new ones. Even in the most recent seven-engine static fire test, several removed engines have made their way into the production site. Thus, the design change related to the Raptors is essential. As previously reported, while the Super Heavy B-8 and Starship S-25 prototypes more or less have the same design as the B-7 and S-24, the following B-9 and S-26 prototypes will differ, because they will feature improved Raptors. According to Musk, these will be slightly easier to manufacture, have slightly higher thrust, and will also include the new electric thrust vector control system that replaces the old hydraulic TVC system on Raptor. This will allow much more simplified control of the engine during flight and also simplified hardware and weight reductions on the vehicles, especially on the boosters where 13 of these engines will need to move. At the same time, it is expected to simplify the design of the Super Heavy and improve the payload bay of the Starship. Of course, all of these are just a few of the many changes that will take place on the Duo 26.9, and we look forward to more updates from Musk and SpaceX in the near future. But notably, also in Wednesday's tweets, Elon Musk said that SpaceX is continuing to test rocket boosters at its Starbase compound in Boca Chica, Texas, as it works toward having its Starship on the pad there for its first orbital launch attempt as soon as next month. But he's also planning to start shipping Starship rockets to Florida from South Texas next spring, probably quarter two next year with vehicles initially transferred by boat from Port of Brownsville to the Cape. Musk said Wednesday in response to inquiries via Twitter about launch timelines and locations. Past and current employees of SpaceX speaking on condition of anonymity to discuss the company's plans have also said South Texas is no longer seen by Musk as the gateway. As he waited through multiple delays earlier this year in completion of an environmental review required to begin launch operations at Boca Chica, Musk himself hinted he would set his sights on launching Starship from Cape Canaveral. SpaceX itself last year also started moving forward with building out a Starship launch site at Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, providing another option to the Starbase development and launch compound. It pushed ahead on construction in Florida while waiting on the FAA to complete an environmental impact review of orbital launches on the 47-acre Starbase compound. Now, we do have the alternative of the Cape, and we, we actually applied for environmental approval for launch from the Cape a few years ago and received it, Musk said during an event at Starbase in February. He estimated it would take from six to eight months to build up the, the Cape launch tower and launch from there. For now, SpaceX is reportedly nearing completion of the Starship launch tower at Cape Canaveral. 
The company has fully stacked all nine segments of the first Florida Starship launch integration tower. The next steps to complete the tower will be the installation of the quick disconnect arm and the chopsticks. The completion of the Starship launch integration tower in Florida might take a few weeks to a few months depending on the pace of work SpaceX is able to continue at this location. With the experience of erecting and integrating Mechazilla towers at Starbase previously, SpaceX should be able to smoothly carry out the same operations here in Florida. So, as it seems, the KSC will likely welcome its first Starship boosters in the spring of 2023. Musk even said in another tweet today, with vehicles initially transferred by boat from Port of Brownsville in South Texas to the Cape. So, the KSC is welcoming its first Starship boosters in the spring of 2023, and it's absolutely possible! Woo! While SpaceX provided a bit more specific insight into its next steps towards Starship's crucial orbital launch debut, NASA's Artemis 1 moon rocket passed a critical fueling test Wednesday, potentially keeping it on track for a planned September 27th liftoff. All of the objectives that we set out to do, we were able to accomplish today. Artemis Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson, with the Exploration Ground Systems Program at KSC, said in brief remarks after Wednesday's test, which took up most of the day. That's not to say that everything went perfectly. For example, the leak at the quick disconnect popped up again during liquid hydrogen loading, but the team managed to troubleshoot it. They warmed up the quick disconnect, allowing it to reseat, which reduced the leak rate to acceptable levels. Artemis 1 personnel also noted a different hydrogen leak during a pre-pressurization test, which was also part of Wednesday's activities. This test enabled engineers to calibrate the settings used for conditioning the engines during the terminal count and validate timelines before launch day to reduce schedule risk during the countdown on launch day. NASA officials explained in a blog post after the test wrapped up. This second leak was smaller than the other one, and the Artemis 1 team was able to keep it under control, agency officials said. NASA is currently eyeing September 27th as a launch target for Artemis 1, with a possible backup date of October 2nd. It's too soon to make a formal commitment to either of those dates despite Wednesday's success, Blackwell Thompson said. I am extremely encouraged by the test today and getting through all our objectives. If all goes well with Artemis 1, Artemis 2 will launch astronauts around the moon in 2024, and Artemis 3 will put boots down near the lunar south pole a year or two later. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.